Yo, what is going on guys? Today, we're going to be racing some of the fastest drivers on Le Mans Ultimate. And trust me, this race was pretty, pretty insane. Just how fast these guys are and how consistent they are. I was actually in the Ferrari, which is a little bit slower over race distance because the tire wear seems to affect the Ferrari a little bit more. The Porsche naturally has more turning. So through the middle sector and the last sector, gradually you do start to lose time. But I just wanted to see the true difference and you know how these guys were able to stay so consistent over the stint um i knew that i would probably get a decent start because the ferrari is a little bit quicker down the straight but it kind of lost um about four four or five laps before the tire wear kicks in and then you start to lose time on the guys in the porsche pretty much most people are in the porsche but i i do like the ferrari um I messed up my quality lap a little bit probably maybe could have started third but even so fourth was still all right for me we was racing against kaiki Oliveira, um david john gibson also carl was also in this race as well so it's us four in the top four and it was a pretty pretty insane race man you can see we actually get a good start as um david moved to cover the inside and I was never actually going to try and overtake because I knew I'd be under instant pressure. So I just wanted to sort of see if I can stay with them, try and stay in the slipstream. We broke pretty late on a bit of a dirty line. So we, we, we did actually jump Carl off at the start because he was a little bit further back in his box. But Carl's got back in front now. Now we're just going to try and stay with the guys in front. I've got two Ferraris behind me. So pretty much knew I should be able to pull away from them guys. And what tends to normally happen is even if you're faster than the guys behind you, if they're in like a Porsche or maybe a Corvette, they always seem to save tires better. So they become a threat towards the end of the race. But um, I sort of wanted to work on my pace a little bit because the races I had before, my lap times would completely and utterly drop off so badly. And consistency is definitely the key. You have to try not to stress your tires too much. Learn to adapt your car during the race because at some stage, the braking is going to get pretty tricky because the, the tires are wearing. So you might have to move your brake bias backwards towards the rear and stuff like that. So you have to sort of manage the car. But in the early laps, the early moments, I was just trying to stay with these guys. You can see Carl, he's literally staying with the guys at front. But Kaiki Oliveira at the front is so fast, man. Like To me personally, he's the fastest guy on the game, particularly in the GTEs. I haven't seen him do the hypercars or the lmps but in the gtes this guy is literally phenomenal he's insane so um for me personally seeing how fast he was in person i did actually watch the replay back as well afterwards it's like jesus this guy is like every lap just perfect you know just on it every single lap now as i said before the ferrari in the first few laps it's okay it's, it's not too bad man you you are going to struggle to keep keep up with the Porsches because you do start to get a little bit of understeer and um, particularly once the tires start wearing but you know I was still comfortable pulling away from the guys behind so I didn't have anything to focus on behind which is always a positive because on this game once you start battling you just you lose loads you know um but you can just see already the guys in front they're starting to stretch it and you know one of the biggest tricks on uh, LMU is being able to carry your speed for our whole stint technically you only want to lose between I would say you know half a second to six tenths over the whole entire stint if you're doing a 25 minute race that's sort of the goal so whatever your your fastest lap is by the time you get to the end of the race you, you want to be like literally that like maybe five to six tenths slower than that if you can do that then you've got good consistent pace thing is with me sometimes i will drop off to a second or 1.2 1.3 then i'll get back to doing decent lap times and it's, it's tricky man you you got to be on it but we're up to third anyway with carl's mistake and um wasn't too sure how fast he'd be behind me but i knew that definitely the car was feeling okay particularly because we still had the grip in the tires but the only thing that was sort of worrying me is a little bit is the races i had tried before i tended to get into a place where i'll just start locking up a bit too much and then you know just end up you know losing so much time but that was crazy because what i was actually doing i was actually running mediums on the front 
of of the car thinking that I would get a little bit more life out of the tyres but actually all it did was really slow my lap times down and I was still getting a lot of still getting a lot of wear on the front and still you know struggling with the braking a little bit um this is the section of the track where the Porsche definitely pulls away um just that long right hand there it just naturally just turns in more to the corner the Ferrari when it struggles with tyre wear and stuff like that tyre heat you tend to get a lot of understeer also what i noticed as well is the guys in the porsche they were they their brake force was definitely higher than mine i was running about a brake force of about 86 and if you see where i was braking for turn one compared to where they were braking for turn one i was braking meters earlier maybe 20 20 25 meters earlier than what the guys in the porsche were doing which again is going to be quite a lot of time you know um but for me i sort of figured out some settings for the ferrari that makes it a little bit more agile uh, in terms of the traction control settings carl bins it behind us i think he must have put his tc down i got to pull it back up and then ends up spinning it and that that can be easily done man because you do sort of have to manage your car as you go sometimes i'll be going through all the tc settings to find the setting that feels the best um and for me around here if you put your tc settings to seven four five then normally in the ferrari it allows you to be a little bit more uh quicker through the middle sector through the long right hander the car's more agile able to get the nose in it rotates way more and for me personally that was the that was like the best sort of um combination of traction control that i could find also i put my brake bias rearwards to about 48.3 i think and yeah that was the brake bias i was running but as the race goes on you'll see i'll end up having to go even more rearwards just to stop the brakes from locking and stuff like that so it's, it's always tricky man it takes a lot of management um to be accurate on this game is a lot harder than you think because of you know you only have to get your braking wrong once or just you know slightly too much brake on then you lock up and then you know you damage your tires and it can just it's very very easy to to like lose concentration and just mess up but looking at the guys in front you can see Oliveira is absolutely just bolted he's absolutely gone and as i said so consistent so fast man um now you can already see our lap times after sort of what's it 10 minutes or so you can already see we're losing like half a second already and you know that's that's the that's the point where we need to try and fix I would say um i'm saying 10 minutes it's only been like like five laps so that that's that's the way you gotta try and that's something i gotta try and work on because by this stage i probably only want to be losing maybe a, a tenth or two you know two tenths away from my fastest lap that's kind of where i should be at but when you start losing half a second within five laps then it's pretty much a wrap um as you can see now I'm still getting decent rotation here but you look how hot the front tires get through that corner and as i said when the tires get hot on the ferrari it just you just get understeer you know um and maybe because i'm trying to keep up with the porsches where there is no through that section anyway there is no keeping up with the porsches they're just faster you know not not really much you can do this is not a bad lap only a tenth off but again small mistakes and you end up losing so much time and you know that's where a lot of it comes from man if you can stay truly consistent and not make the mistakes there's so much time to be gained as in every game every sim racing game of course but some games are easier than others to stay consistent you know for me if i've got a good setup on acc and i like the track or whatever then it's not hard to just put lap after lap together but on this game is very tricky man and you kind of even even when you feel like you're in control of the car you kind of still drive knowing that it takes a split second to make a big mistake that will cost you you know and that's always kind of in the back of my mind so sometimes it's just you, you have to just just relax and just realize you haven't got the pace to catch the guys in front there's no point over pushing you literally just do your race man that's all you can do do your race don't start trying to over push and stuff like that because you will just make mistakes you'll end up binning it or you end up looking up the tires that will cost you in the long run 
Now, fast forward to the start of lap eight, you can see the guys in front have just kept on extending the gap. And if you look at my lap times, I was doing sort of 38 threes at the start of the race. Now, down into the 39.5, that's 1.2 seconds already. And after the race, I will show you the levels of consistency um, Oliveira was doing at the front of the field compared to everybody else pretty much just kind of being a little bit more up and down on the lap times and it's crazy how he's able to stay so fast for so long and you know the gradual the gradual time loss instead of it being sort of sporadic in the way that i will one lap be really slow another lap be decent another lap be really slow and it just shows you man that the quality of the very best guys if you guys don't know who Oliver is he's actually one of the esports drivers on the game that was competing in like Ren Sport, and you might have seen him up against the likes of McCormack and Josh Rogers and Kevin Siggy, the, like pretty much the Redline team. You know, that's where all the top esports drivers went to battle it out on a brand new game on Ren Sport. And Oliver was one of the guys that was there. I think he drives for, is it BS Competition? I think that's who he drives for, but absolutely insane, man. I've done a video on him before, and bro, he's just so fast, man. It's, it's, I just don't even know it's crazy i watched his footage back after the race like wow this dude is just he's just on it you know and gaps up to about 10 seconds towards the front now we are pulling away from the other ferraris which is good um it shows that i had decent pace at least for the ferrari um i'm probably gonna try the porsche the next time i do this race um i, I did want to try the corvette but i'm so up and down in that car you know i'm, I'm never can really get a good read of whether i'm fast enough in that car because some tracks it feels good other tracks i just can't get to grips with it but um definitely want to try the porsche around here see much see how much longer i can keep the tires in in the porsche compared to the ferrari um but for me the main thing is is as i said is just try not to overdrive and you know don't just settle for the tc settings that you get in game mess around with it a little bit try and find some things that's going to help you perform a little bit better like for me um i actually went up on the the tc itself i put that up to seven and that was allowing me to sort of put my foot down coming out of the last corner without having to make too many corrections and without putting too much heat through the rear tires and that's one of the things you want to you know you want to watch out for how much heat you're putting into your tires and stuff like that because that's going to affect your lap times massively and also you know if you're coming out of a corner and your rear tires are yellow it enhances the chance that you're actually going to bin it on the corner exit so really have to be careful now with this for me i was trying to like really get it get it straightened up before i get on the throttle too hard you can see the tires do start to go yellow a little bit but i was able to control it for the most part um again i've sort of got my lap tires down to about eight nine tenths off which isn't terrible but we're looking for that magic sort of five six tenth um number at this point in the race and still losing way too much compared to the guys in front and then i literally made a mistake but what's important is if you go deep into a break zone don't just slam on the brakes and try and lock it up to get it stopped literally just just let off the brake and just just roll it in bro accept that you've made the mistake and just you know let it go don't try and lock your brakes and try and stand on the brakes extra hard because you're probably not going to stop any sooner anyway and you're just going to lock your tires up and then you're going to really see the pace drop off once you've had a big moment like that um that's something that i've learned and it's not like other games like on acc if you go too deep into the corner you pretty much just slam on and you try and like slam shift the gears a little bit yeah that doesn't work on on, on lmu at all you literally lock your tires up and then lose for about two three percent of the tire you know so on this lap you can see we've we've lost like an extra okay, second to probably Between where we lines. would have been and that's just because of the turn one but at the very least at least we didn't you know kill the tires trying to get the car stopped but look fuji is a very tricky tricky track um and actually you know turn one you can get away with braking much later than you actually think like for me i was braking extremely early in the being it trying to be extremely tentative on the brakes whereas i think i probably could have went up on the brake force and just 
broke way later than what I was doing. Maybe it would have given me a faster lap. I've actually got the second fastest Ferrari lap time of the week. Um, I think we're, me and the other guy, we're both on 38.3s. I think I'm in the top 10 at the moment, unless someone's beat me um, now. But I think I'm in the top 10 of all the lap times done this week. So, you know, our pace wasn't bad. It's just that, you know, being able to hold that pace is the difference. Now, me and Carl were discussing, um, is it faster to sort of run one medium tyre on let's say the front left for me where the front left takes a bit of a beat in it overheats and stuff like that but i did try it and for me man the softs are just faster and i was even more consistent now for him he was saying he put mediums on the rear and he was able to stay and do the same consistent lap times pretty much you know for the whole race but how much lap time do you actually lose by running the mediums or running you know the car half and half like softs at the front mediums on the rear so that's another thing to discuss i personally think that's something that you probably want to try if the the track conditions are extremely hot or if you're doing a longer race than a 20 minute 25 minute race then maybe that's something you want to do i know a lot of the guys in the hypercars do you know mix and match the tires if i if i was to do this race again if i was to try it i might try it again I think I would only run a medium on the front left because that's the only tire that really dies. And what I did notice as well, if there's a tire that does um, sort of get punished more than any other tire, when you hit the braking zone, that tends to be the first tire that kind of locks up for me. So, you know, once once you realize that you're, you're going to struggle a little bit in the braking zone, that's when I start bringing in changes into the brake bias. I start going more rearwards on the brake bias and just to stop the locking you know because once the locking starts if you just keep on locking up keep on locking up then you know eventually your pace just dies and then you can barely make a corner you know but you can see i'm putting so much stress through that front left tire it's it's getting extremely hot you know but again as you can see i'm only four temps down and at this point in the lap four temps is, is not bad but you can see in the in the last sector that's where i start losing it all the tight and twisty parts that's where you know that loss of grip shows shows up the most and that's where you know something i need to improve upon um maybe try and be a little bit more smoother with the inputs at the beginning of the race or try not take too much out of the tires in the beginning of the race sometimes you know you get you're just trying to chase the people in front but i knew um um, David and um, Oliveira would be gone pretty much. I knew Carl would have probably been gone as well, but you know, when, when you when you're on a race, you just you just want to keep up with the fast guys. But there's there was no keeping up with them in this. You can literally see at this point in the race, they're just gapping me. Two minutes to go. Oliveira now 18 seconds down the road, still doing insane lap times. I'm doing 39 fours, which again it didn't feel terrible. Um, the other guys in the ferrari completely fell off so i was probably doing a decent decent enough job but you know maybe there's something that lmu needs to do in terms of tire wear um probably i would say from the cars i've tried the aston and the ferrari tend to suffer badly when it comes to tire wear the corvette was okay um particularly around sebring the corvette was actually pretty good on tires so um not sure why that was uh sebring was definitely a good track for the corvette I will, I will say that but from my experience the ferrari and the the aston do tend to die off very quickly in races even if you don't make any big mistakes they just the tires it just tends to fade now i think if you was to make the tire wear the same as the porsche and the ferrari ferrari possibly would be meta because i do believe that it's over one lap is pretty quick i don't think there's a massive difference between them especially if you you know if you can find the right tc settings to use on a quali lap you can probably compete with the porsche like the fastest guys could probably get a tune out of the ferrari even though it is fixed out but um during the race there's just not there's not much you can really do you know there's not much you can do a bit faster down the straight but the porsche definitely breaks a lot later you know so um 
it's interesting. I wonder if I wonder if um, the team at LMU will revise some of the the buck or the, the tire wear or something like that. I'm not too sure they will because obviously not too long, not too far away now. We're expecting GT threes, and I honestly think once the GT threes come out, people are just gonna stop driving the, the GTEs altogether. But um, it's interesting. It does make it sort of like a like a Porsche Cup race because just the majority of the field just stays in a Porsche the whole time. And that's why I like to, you know, I like to switch it up. I don't like to be in the same car everybody else is using, but obviously I do get it. No one wants to be driving and then just getting just mad understeer halfway through the race and just losing positions, you know. But Kaiki now is 21 seconds in front. He's still lapping incredibly fast. I think at, at this point in the race, I believe he was still doing low 38s, man, which is insane. I'll actually show you guys his lap times at the end and what he was doing. And it's just like, wow, like, how are you not falling off? And it's not like he's not pushing. He's flying, you know, me. I get to a point where I'm just driving. I'm not really pushing. I'm just driving and trying to stay consistent. I'm not like pushing the car through corners and stuff and i'm still losing like lots and he he's flying and just <laughs> it just seems to not even be a problem like not lose too much in terms of tire wear and yeah man i've got to know the secret bro i've got to know the secret because it's an insane performance man but we come home in third position i was happy to take the podium i'm not gonna lie i was happy because the race before this guys let me tell you something i was struggling my tire wear was awful and yeah but as you can see 38 free wasn't even that bad of a lap time actually it was only about four temps off of david uh kaiki Oliveira was flying he's actually got the fastest lap around here in race trim of the week i believe he's on a 37 is it 37 two or three i think so yeah he's just in another league mate at the moment um faster slap a good a good half a second faster than anybody else but let's go and check out his lap times from the replay where i watched him driving and seeing what we can see in terms of his consistency so we jumped in the replay replay quickly and just gonna pick up on some of his lap times and you can see at the start of the race he does the 37 4 fastest lap pretty early on lap three and just look at those lap times literally he's pretty much nailing a lap within two or three temps the whole entire time up until lap seven he even dips back into the 37s again on lap eight but even on the last few laps i'm sure he gets them invalidated but lap 13 lap 14 he was still doing 38 ones if you go on to um david gibbons and probably not as consistent you can see some of the gaps are a little bigger his early laps were very good, very close. And then once he gets to lap eight, there's like that, that sort of six tenth drop off that I was talking about that you kind of want to aim for. But then he starts dropping into like 39s. And honestly, he was doing kind of similar lap times to what I was doing. And you can see me 39 twos, 39 five fours, 39 sevens, and then 40.9s and 40.1s. I think the 40.9 was where I made the mistake at turn one. But you can see the drop off is like a second, you know? Um, the main drop off is pretty much like a second or 1.1 1.2 and yeah you consider that you know on the last lap or the last couple of laps Oliveira was still doing 38 ones that is insane but anyway guys like the video hit the notification bell to catch my videos first it's cryptic tmg and i'm out peace